since Dog Day is the only smiling critter left besides Catnap. Catnap most likely killed them all. The protagonist meets a lot of little, happy animals. But from the looks of it, the main mascots who participated in Bigger Buddy initiatives are only Catnap and Dog Day. They explain that Dog Day, along with many other dolls, disobeyed Catnap and did not agree with his brutal extermination of all the employees, which gave them the title of heretics, those who, in Catnap's opinion, go against the righteous path, and that, as a result, Catnap goes on another mass massacre, killing a lot of people. Dog Day is a prisoner who endures daily agony and the terrible punishment of having half of his body bitten off. When the protagonist finally reaches Dog Day, he tells him that it is too late for him, and that even though he knows he is going to die, Dog Day's selfless persona and traits show how he still cares about the innocent. As a result, Dog Day tells the protagonist to leave him behind and save the others because it is too late for him. After being tricked by Catnap, the small, grin-filled quitters infiltrate Dog Day's friend, taking over his body and mind, and turning him into an angry person that chases after the main character. Dog Day has probably gone on by now, and is now just a carcass under the grip of the small, happy critters. This demonstrates the horrifying manner in which these tiny beings are able to animate a lifeless body and somehow control every bodily part as though the corpse were alive. They do not merely carry and drag the body, rather, they infiltrate the host body and mind like a parasite, fully taking control and assuming control over the test subject's vital organs that have been surgically replaced inside the dolls. Perhaps you're wondering how, given how well his lower body has been chewed up, and that he appears to have some sort of turn it. Preventing him from dying from excessive blood loss, it appears likely that Dog Day was only recently restrained and imprisoned. Otherwise, the Tet is likely a temporary measure used until additional corrections and surgeries are carried out to save someone's life and stop the blood loss. It's also highly unlikely that Dog Day has a digestive system. In my opinion, Dog Day was either living among the hostile dolls as a spy, lying to them about his true intentions to betray them, and upon their discovery, Catnap attacked them and punished them as traitors, leaving him in the present cell, crucified as an example of what happens to her idics, or the opposers. Another plausible explanation is that he was in hiding, and was discovered receiving the same punishment. However, I think that claiming to be on the prototypical side, and then being found out to be a spy is more appropriate. Given that he was a traitor and effectively betrayed them from the beginning, it is more appropriate for his punishment to be on display and teach others about what happens to heretics. Since this seems to have happened recently, it's also possible that this is a direct and intentional warning to Poppy Kissy Missy, the protagonist, and the other adults about what will happen to them in retaliation. Despite his harsh punishment, Dog Day maintained his courage and spirit. However, as Poppy explains, if any doll even dared to run away, they would meet a deadly fate in the prototype's hands. Therefore, Ollie, working with Poppy, decides to work with other dolls, with the smiling critter joining them, especially Dog Day, who has tried for years to find a way out and save the others, who one by one meet there and under Catnap's hands, being the vessel for the prototype. Standing on the right side where the prototype is wrong, it seems that Ali might have been one of the originals who worked alongside Puppy to find their angel to liberate them. Going further down, Puppy seemed to have a clear goal of breaking out and helping Godar, which is why she was put away inside her bucks when she went into a deep sleep or hibernation. She was kept away and guarded by Huggy Wuggy, the very first level of security to stop any intruders or dolls, even from freeing care. Based on what Dog Day says and his appearance, it's very likely that he just got punished for his crimes of being against the prototype. Kisi Missy also experiences this at the end of the chapter, as they just so happen to reveal their true intentions of wanting to run away and help others. It's unclear why Catnap or the prototype didn't kill her when they realized she was a heretic, although it's possible that she was too vital and significant to kill. Perhaps she even bears the poppy flower, which is the essence of life for all the dolls. For this reason, she was carefully hidden away to fall into a deep sleep rather than being slain. How much power does the prototype actually have over the dolls now? Since we have proof after evidence of how each doll was persuaded to cooperate with him, 
it is easy to assume that the only way he gains control over the dolls is psychological. Some dolls followed the prototype because they saw the cruelty of the adults, and the scientists saw them as the real evil demons. They were following anyone who fought against them no matter how far they went, but many adults were indifferent. Catnap, originally Theodore Gramble, was an orphan child who had no friends or family. He was rescued by the prototype and shown affection and care, which is why he became his most devoted follower. However, since the prototype was the only character who could set them free, they followed him in order to avoid starvation because they knew he had control over the food supply, which could include the last of the employee's corpses that might be preserved in some way so they wouldn't decay or even the orphan. Lastly, the last psychological control mechanism involves fear, as demonstrated by Catnap's attacks and killings of those who don't follow him, which scares all the dolls into obeying the prototype. Miss Delight even talks about how much she wanted to murder the prototype after she and her co-workers were forced to fight and eat inside the school, like Circus in order to survive, so we know that the prototype manipulates the others through force or fear. But there is still one last method that we see in Dog Day. Essentially, you could say that Dog Day dies as soon as the small smiling creatures crawl inside him, but in doing so, they take control of him. This means that another way the prototype could manipulate the dolls is by having the small smiling creatures literally take over host buddies' minds like parasites. For the small smiling creatures, however, the way they are controlled is through their intense hunger, which Catnap promises to satiate if they follow him. As Dog Day explains, they eat to fill what they lack inside of them. inside themselves. That thing, Catnap, the prototype is his god. And this is what he does to heretics. These little toys follow Catnap to avoid that very fate. And in return, they are fed. <clears throat> we try to fight it. The prototype's control. I am the last of the smiling critters. Listen to me. You need to get out of this place. You need to live. You and Poppy could fix this, and this madness, the torment. The smiling critters appear to have been gifted with Dog Day being strapped to the wall as a reward for their obedience. Consequently, they crawl inside Dog Day and consume him from the inside out, as we hear Dog Day struggle and suffer, gargling in his own blood, losing his voice box, and eventually losing control over his frail and weak body. What do you think actually happened to Dog Day? Was it a recent event, or has he been chained to the wall for a long time? Please, share your thoughts.